Hey, welcome back everybody. This is Coaster Daddy here. And today I want to talk about Cedar Point's annual winter chill out event that took place on February 23rd, 2019. Now, this is an exciting opportunity for many enthusiasts to get a really special sneak peek at what goes on behind the scenes at Cedar Point during the winter off season. I have never attended one of these events myself, but I would like to go over some of the many exciting things we learned about from this year's winter chill out. I'm going to go from things I find least exciting all the way up to the most notable new things in my opinion. So let's get started. First up, we have two new restaurants coming to Cedar Point. Hugo's Italian Kitchen and Backbeat Q. Hugo's Italian Kitchen is replacing the old Midway Market Buffet right next to Raptor. And it's going to serve traditional Italian food such as handmade pastas, fresh pizzas baked in large open flamed brick ovens, chicken parmesan sandwiches, salads, meatball sandwiches, and fresh desserts. Next up, and this looks really cool actually, is Backbeat Q, which is going to be a new barbecue sit-down restaurant in place of Witch's Wheel. It's going to feature an outdoor dining area. And looking at pictures, this actually looks really nice in the park. It is going to be Motown and rock and roll inspired and will feature live music. It's going to serve smoked brisket, rotisserie chicken, pork platters, and fresh perch, as well as southern sides like okra, cornbread muffins, and house-made mac and cheese. I'm looking forward to checking this out. This looks like a really cool place, and uh, this is very much needed at Cedar Point, I think. They need a nice sit-down restaurant in that area of the park. I also want to tag onto the restaurants. Cedar Point is introducing Frontier Festival this year, which is essentially a rebranded brew and barbecue festival. And it is described as being an immersive Old West sunflower inspired street festival. And it's going to feature things like kids crafts, games, live entertainment, and of course, drinks and food. Next up, I'm going to talk about Corkscrew. We already knew about this one, really. But Cedar Point is repainting the trains on Corkscrew. They're giving them a quote-unquote new retro paint job that's going to harken back to the old days when Corkscrew first opened. The restraints and the chassis are going to remain unchanged, so it's going to be the same ride experience. And though Corkscrew is not a great ride, the paint job does look very nice, so credit where it's due. Next up, I'm going to talk about the new for 2019 attraction, Forbidden Frontier. We have received some new details about the experience, and before it was sort of chalked up as being like an escape room type of thing. And it's not going to be an escape room in the traditional sense, but we learned that this is actually not going to be an upcharge attraction, but it will be included with the mission. So with that, I'm actually looking really forward to checking this out this year. There is a post on the Cedar Point blog hinting at some of the elements of this new attraction. And they also posted a map. And they said they're going to re reveal more as time goes on and more maps and stuff like that. But right now we have this one map. And it shows some really interesting things like these bridges going over the water that have these circular flotation devices underneath, suggesting that these are going to be bridges that kind of like, you know, rock back and forth or move as you walk over them. There is some rock work with waterfalls featured in there. And it's been pointed out that this is likely actually going to be reused from that old Shoot the Rapids water ride that stood on the island from 2010 to 2013. So at least something good is coming from that ride, I guess. So apparently as well, according to the Sandusky Register, an article they did about Winter Chill Out, I will link that article in the description, there are apparently going to be unique menu items found on the island as well, which I find really interesting. So I'm actually quite looking forward to this experience. I think Cedar Point is making a good move, and they're going for more of that overall experience now. And I think this is a great step in that direction, you know, having something that features live theater elements and more interactive things looks very fun. Next up, I'm going to talk about Magnum. I find this one pretty interesting. They added some new padding to the lap bars on Magnum XL200 because of all the complaints about discomfort on the ride. 
For what it's worth, I've always thought Magnum is a magnificent ride. It's one of my all-time favorites. I will always love this ride. And I don't really find it that uncomfortable like a lot of people do, but the fact is a lot of people do find it very uncomfortable and that can't be ignored. So Cedar Point added this padding and to me this is really interesting because it's like, first of all, looking at it, is this padding really going to help a lot with that discomfort? It looks really minimal to me. And I also must say it even looks sort of temporary. So is Cedar Point maybe looking in the next couple years to sort of retrofit Magnum's trains with a better lap bar system or possibly even some new trains? What do you guys think about this looking at the pictures? I just find this really interesting because it just doesn't seem like it would help a whole lot, but I could be wrong. And I have to say, even though I love Magnum so much, I really do think those lap bars are pretty bad. Hopefully this will help with that. And maybe we'll even see some better lap bars or better trains in the future. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments because I genuinely am really interested to hear what you guys have to say about this. I find it really interesting. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about here, this is so exciting to me. This is definitely the best thing I think that came out of the Winter Chill Out event. And I think a lot of you guys are going to be really excited about this too. Steel Vengeance. There is going to be a new system put in place on Steel Vengeance regarding the dreaded no phone and queue line policy. Pouches are going to be added to the cars to put loose articles into so you won't have to purchase lockers for small items like your cell phones, sunglasses, stuff like that. This is a really smart move on Cedar Point's part and they realized the no phone policy wasn't sustainable and I'm sure it was also difficult to really strictly enforce. So. I'm looking forward to getting some awesome shots from the queue line this year of Steel Vengeance. That I think this is really good news. It's a really good move on Cedar Point's part. And it will add to the overall satisfaction of the experience. Because this was a pretty big deal. You know, for coaster enthusiasts that wanted to go and ride Steel Vengeance, you have to wait in two, three hour long lines. And you weren't able to even get any pictures or anything like that. So this is a really good move. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how this works out. I think this is going to be great. Also, the handles sticking out from the lap bars have been removed. After adding them, apparently Cedar Point realized guests would have a better experience without them because I guess hands were like banging and rubbing together on the ride. Nothing like uh, banging and rubbing some hands together, some strangers, you know, some uh, sweaty hands. Anyway, those are just many of the big things I wanted to discuss that we now know about. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything important. There is a lot of info that was gained from this year's event, and there's way too much to go into every single little thing that we found out. These are just some of the more notable and exciting things that we know about up to this point. So what are your thoughts on these developments? Are you guys excited for the new restaurants for Forbidden Frontier? What do you think about those restraints on Magnum? Seriously, let me know. What do you guys think about that? I also want to say real quick, before I end this video, thank you guys so much for helping me reach 200 subscribers. I just reached 200 in the past few days, and I'm so grateful. Thank you guys so much for sticking around up to this point. And if you're looking forward to more theme park and roller coaster content in the future, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that. This is Coaster Daddy. Thanks for watching. Bye.